welcome. <laughs> I'm a professional at this. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. I will <clears throat> hang out for a few seconds, see who jumps in this morning. I thought we would this week do something just a little bit different instead of a um, themed discussion from the poll of the week like we've been doing over the past series of live streams. I thought we would just take a minute to celebrate all of our wins this week, talk about your carnivore stories. I asked for a few um, points in the poll of the week this week about the biggest mindset shift that prompted you to start this way of eating. And a lot of you shared <clears throat> your success stories in the comments. And so I thought, since we just hit 10,000 subscribers this week, we've got um, a lot of new people in the community. I thought this would be a good opportunity to just kind of get together, chat about whatever you guys want to talk about. And um, we've got a bunch of comments here from the poll that we can go through people's testimonies and then, um, yeah, just kind of, kind of wing it today. So if anybody is following along in the 2024 live stream journal pack, this is week five. I have my notes, um, some notes here that I just made over the week and I have four journal prompts for you still for the end of the hour related to kind of what we're going to talk about. Just thinking about um, your healing journey, how far you've come, how that affects different areas of your life. And so I'm excited to hang out with you all today. We're the last few weeks I've had clouds. And so the light's been great in here. And today I have the direct sun again. So I've got my little rig up. So sorry, the lighting's a little bit funky today. Um, <clears throat> I think as the season, as, as we move into spring and summer, the sun's going to go up and away from my window. So hopefully that'll be a little more consistent, but, um, Simpson Johns. Hi, Nia. Getting getting looking forward to getting to know you great nice to meet you and i'm glad you're here today looking forward to getting to know everybody better myself Dealey, hello hello yay ten thousand. yeah that's a pretty pretty cool milestone right i um put up a video yesterday or the day before about just kind of how um how awesome it is to feel the camaraderie, sorry, we got a bunch of motorcycles going by. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, the camaraderie and the community and how that has really been inspirational to me because it's kind of hard sometimes to talk about some of these more sensitive health related topics, right? And it's scary to put that out on the internet sometimes um, for fear of it's just the internet, right? And everybody has an opinion and everybody, um, you know, not everyone's going to see things the way that that we're coming from. And so to have a group now of relatively like minded people that want to pursue better health, that want to um, question the guidance and the, the rules and the information that we've been given and really seek out true healing and get more in touch with our intuition, all that kind of stuff is so encouraging. So I really appreciate all of you. <clears throat> Sorry, I always have a frog in my throat in the morning yet. Um, Lee Zapp, congrats from Houston on the 10K. That was super fast. Yay. Okay, you're in Houston. Nice. There's so many, there's so many of us in Texas, I feel like. Um, I feel like it did go fast too. Some of those recipe videos, the beef jerky one really took off. And um that was that was one that that a lot of people liked. So I'll be, I am, I have lots of plans to work on more of that stuff. Um, just with doing the lion diet updates, I've gotten behind on some of those other videos that I had planned. And so my, I'm excited for February to kind of get caught up on some of those videos that I've been brewing for a while. Um, yeah, we need to have a meetup or something. I know, um, carnivore soldier, he's in Austin. I think he tried to do a meetup this month for those in, in like the North Texas area. I didn't end up making it to that. But I keep feeling like there's so many of us here we need to do. We need to all get together sometime. Hit the thumbs up. Yes. Carnivores unite. Yes. This um, this community is amazing. And I truly appreciate all of 
all of your input, your inspiration, your comments, your success stories. My dust drawer is in the house. Hi, congrats. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Yeah, this is this is awesome. So I thought this would be a good day to just kind of share our victories and get to know one another a little bit. And I hope that even if you're watching the replay, obviously leave your comments if we didn't get to your story or if you have something to share, because it's so it's not even just about the videos that I'm putting out. It's about that interaction with with everybody in the comments and helping each other out and answering each other's questions, because I can only speak from my experience, you know, the, the background that the health issues that I have come from. And so sometimes I don't have great advice for people in other situations. And so that's what I love about the carnivore community in general. And then, you know, getting to go through the comments that come through on my videos, because you all are helping each other out too now, which is super cool. Um, United Carnivore says, feel the fear and do it anyway, right? If that, if that's one piece of advice, um, that has been consistent in bringing me, I wouldn't say necessarily success, but, um, in helping me overcome personal challenges and improve my own self-worth, <clears throat> excuse me, and my own sense of, um, identity and well-being and confidence. It's that. It's recognize that something's scary, but go for it anyway. Uh, Charles Champ, hi from Cape Town, South Africa. Good morning. Well, what time is it for you? I always say good morning because I'm here at 10 a.m. Central Time in Northern Texas, but what time is it for you in South Africa? Very cool. Turbine, the brilliant Miss Nia. Good morning. Thanks for being here. United Carnivore, celebrating the alive category, miles of smiles. Yes. Carl, uh, Charles says, 1800 evening here. Nice. So good evening to you. Awesome. Well, I kind of, uh, we can start with the poll of the week here and because if you've if you've seen any of these live streams in the past or you've watched any of my update videos i i try to make an effort to not just talk about diet not just talk about the benefits that i'm getting from this way of eating physically but also like the mental and emotional aspects the personal development aspects of all that i have access to now from cleaning up my health and addressing my addictive, you know, relationship with food and alcohol and all these things like that. And that's, that is some of the, um, that's some of the change that I found most profound outside of just healing the, the vast majority of my gut symptoms. And <clears throat> if you've been watching my updates, you know, I'm still struggling a little bit with my skin. I have just one main patch of psoriasis on my knee right now that comes and goes and flares up and goes away. I have a few little spots on my face that come and go. And so I've been trying lion diet this month to see if like removing bacon and um, chicken and all of the dairy that I was consuming along with coffee would clear some of that up. So I'm still on my journey to, you know, the place that I want to be physically, but the mental health aspects and the lifestyle aspects that have come become more apparent to me and and I've had more access to change and improve as a result of eating this way have been really incredible. And so I always try to incorporate that into my content as well um, because I think that's so important. Nutrition is, in my opinion, the foundation or like the step one to making a big change in your life, right? Because, and we can almost nearly all of us can attest to that. When you start providing your body with what it actually needs in the form, the bioavailable form that it that it needs it in, and we remove the garbage, we remove the addictive substances, we remove the stuff that's been poisoning us, um, your life can transform, right? And then once that's under control and you're waking up with more energy and you're sleeping better and you're just feeling more vibrant and your mental health... Um, for many of us seems to stabilize, then you get to go live life, right? As the person who you really are. And so 
becoming who you are, which is the tagline for this, this channel and this community, um, I believe starts with that, starts with that nutrition. And I'm obviously a proponent of carnivore animal based, um, for that. Um, so that's why I kind of incorporate all that into my videos as well, because the nutrition is so, so, so important. But then after you kind of get that dialed in, you figure out exactly where on the proper human diet spectrum you fall, what works for you, what foods you can incorporate, all that kind of stuff. Then you just kind of get to go on autopilot, right? And you know how you're going to be feeling. And then you can plan ahead and do some of these other things that, that you want to do in your life. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. D. Lee says, mental health. I was literally in bed for four years with depression. After five days of carnivore, my depression was gone. It seems unbelievable. Yeah, I've heard I've heard so many similar accounts as well. I mean, it's that I don't know how like you can argue with that in terms of nutrition being so vitally important for mental health and our and our just general sense of well-being and motivation and wanting to show up in our lives. And so, um, yes, and I've had this happen too, uh, where I've even had people close to me tell me that it didn't happen. It's insulting for them to say that. Right. And I, I feel that way online sometimes where um, I haven't gotten this much on my own personal videos, but others that I watch, I will read the comments too. And um, I think it's so funny because when we get, I kind of touched on this at the end of last week's video about diet dogma and getting so ingrained in our way of eating that we can't even see anyone's outside perspective and that that can happen here in the carnivore space. And so it's just something to be aware of. But I think this is what happens to people when they just can't, they might be so ingrained in their view of nutrition and health that they can't even be open enough to be receptive to someone saying like, look what happened to me. Can you believe this? How much better I feel now? And that's unfortunate, right? That's unfortunate. And it hurts when people don't want to take the time to listen or understand. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's no fun. And it happens a lot. Um, <clears throat> so I thought I would bring up the poll this week. So I asked you, what's the biggest mindset shift that prompted you to start this way of eating, to start carnivore? And I know some are carnivores, some are ketovore, some are keto, perhaps some of you are on the lion diet. So, um, you know, when I say that, I just kind of mean this shift into very low carb, ancestral way of eating, ancestrally appropriate nutrition. So the first option you had to choose from was abandoning the old nutrition paradigm. So maybe there was something that came into your awareness, whether it was research or it was um, just a, a feeling or an intuition that you had that there was something up with this. Um, maybe just looking out at society and seeing, hey, we are all more sick and and chronically ill and overweight than we've ever been this you know and this is the advice we're getting this can't this doesn't add up um the second option was <clears throat> um, believing so like an innate or a fundamental belief in the body's innate ability to heal when given the nutrition that it needs so when given a proper human diet whatever that might be the body is has this master intelligence that will balance itself out, right? And start to heal itself without a whole lot of input from the external external environment as long as we're giving it the proper nutrition. The third option was you got inspired by someone else's transformation and that really made a, a click for you. And you thought, oh, kind of like um, D. Lee was saying, why would you even make that up, right? Like why would, if you said my depression I've suffered for four years of barely being able to get out of bed. And then in five days, it's gone since I removed a bunch of junk and added in proper human nutrition. Um, you know, that's a, a very fascinating, interesting transformation. You'd think people would be curious, right? But not everybody is. Um, but a lot of us came to it through that. We saw somebody else transform their health or you know, somebody that suffered with something that we've experienced and then we saw that change and then we thought, oh, maybe 
what I've been told is wrong or maybe what I've been doing is wrong. And so that was an option. And then the last one you could vote for was other. And so if one of your choices wasn't listed and then leave a comment. And so we got um, 260 votes this week. So that's awesome. And the the majority of people voted for the second option, but this was only 39%. So there was a pretty good split between all of them. And I think they're kind of all related. So I think that's why it's kind of hard to separate sometimes what the final straw is um, when you have a mindset shift like that. But 39% of you voted for believing in the, the body's innate ability to heal when given a proper human diet. 30% were inspired by someone else's transformation, then 17 for abandoning the old nutrition paradigm, and then 13% said, read my comment. I have something else to say. So um, I thought that's really cool because, again, a lot of these are they're kind of compounding. So you might have seen somebody else have a transformation, but then like been like, well, that doesn't fit with the nutrition guidance that we're given, right? And that might cause you to question the old nutrition paradigm, right? Or the the common knowledge that we're given about the food pyramid and my plate and all this kind of stuff. And then you might have seen another person transform and and then it kind of cascades from there. So, but I'm always really curious to hear how that happened for people because for me, it was a process of elimination. I just decided to trust my body and continue to remove things um, as I discovered things that were wrong with the plants that I was eating. Essentially, first it was grains and legumes that I removed, and that made a huge difference, um, kind of a paleo approach from a vegetarian vegan approach. And um, then I learned about keto. And then the big kicker for me was FODMAPs because on keto, excuse me, I was um, eating a lot of those low carb vegetables, like the cruciferous vegetables, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, kale. I was having a lot of sal like spinach salads, mixed green salads and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then when I discovered what FODMAPs were, it's like all of those vegetables. So they are, it's the sugars that are in those cruciferous, mostly cruciferous vegetables um, that just ferment and cause bloating and pain and some of the worst digestive problems I've had, I think, um, beans and all of those low carb vegetables, just, um, as Dr. Chafee would say they're it feels like they're trying to kill me when I eat them. Um, so just continuing to question like, okay, well maybe Brussels sprouts aren't healthy for me. Maybe broccoli is not healthy for me and keep continuing to confront that based on what the feedback was from my body that allowed me to be cool with just continuing to cut things out. And then I got down to meat and I was like, frustrated at that point because I thought wow this this sucks you know is, is meat literally the only thing I can tolerate but um it ended up being such a blessing right because now here I am on my health journey again um and so so much improvement has happened and now I get to be on here talking with all you guys about it super cool Marvin Malley's here hello from East Te Texas another Texas person. Hooray. Renee's here. Good morning. Jay's in here. Good morning, everybody. So let's read some of your comments from the poll because um, there were a lot of good, a lot of good stories here. So Susie Griffith says, I had a whole cluster of symptoms that had progressively gotten worse over a year. My lab tests showed nothing but a little bit of calcium oxalate in a urinalysis, so I just tried carnivore. Just eating one steak, I felt a little bit better, so it didn't matter to me, and I just wanted to feel better. And it worked. I'm in my eighth month. That's fantastic. See, that's that's a testament to intuition, right? She was able to just eat that first steak and then notice, okay, I'm feeling better. And so... Um, when you say it didn't matter to me, I just wanted to feel better. That to me expresses sort of letting go of that old paradigm, right? Like, I don't care what they, they tell me the rules are anymore. This is working for me. And so I'm going to pursue it and see how it goes. And now you're in your eighth month. So that's awesome. Um, for Zoo Florida says, I have seen the transformation of others, 
but it made me believe in the body's ability to heal when given the proper nutrition. My current anniversary is February 1st, and I feel better at 62 than the last two decades. I love that. I love hearing that. Um, I mean, I love hearing it from everybody, but it, it's so incredible to me. And again, it, it's just such a testament to the power of the proper nutrition that even at 62, I've had comments from um, ladies and, and gentlemen in their 70s too, saying like their life is completely transformed now. And so it's never too late to undo some of this damage. It's never too late to change your nutrition and change your life, you know, in the way that you experience life, the way you get to engage with life. So that's incredible. And there again, we have the connection between seeing somebody else transform and then that encouraging that belief in the body's ability to heal, right? And and Dr. Barry always talks about this too. We don't need all the pills and potions and products or the three P's or whatever he says. Um, it's like that's 5% of, of your battle or maybe 10% of your battle, but 80, 90% of it is the fuel that we're putting in. And so when we see other people start to change, that that's so encouraging um, to help other people really believe that the body is intelligent, the higher power works in the body in uh, as the way I see it. Um, Carolyn 6827, my A1C was 12 and my weight was out of control. So far I've gotten to 5.7 A1C and lost 70 pounds and feel like a new person. That's super cool. Awesome, Carolyn. Yeah, we talked about kind of feeling like a new person, I think last week. Um, and how, how switching your nutrition and having a health transformation has changed your identity or has it changed identity is kind of what we talked about. And so that I feel like I, I've thought about that conversation a lot this week and some of the, some of the input that, that you guys put in and I kind of want to do a part two. I feel like I, I didn't fully answer some of your questions last week, like I wanted to, um, there was just like so much coming to my mind, I couldn't really organize it right. And so because that's something that I'm super fascinated with. But here's another example. You feel like a new person, you get to have a completely different experience of life, because you now have your health, and you can now move around the way you want to, and you can now participate in things that maybe you didn't feel motivated to or your body just hurt too much or for whatever reason you couldn't do before. So I love hearing that stuff. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I have this weird frog in my throat this morning. Get out of there. Since I quit coffee, that's been happening. So what does that mean? I don't know. Um, after two years of healthy, oh, sorry, Andrew Stanley, 74, 59, after two years of healthy, strict keto and reversing my type two diabetes, it seemed like the logical lifestyle to go after my research, evolutionary proof and metabolic, metabolic, physical and mental benefits feel decades younger. Yes. Decades younger. I'm, um, 37, just turned 37 in December and you know, I never, it's typical, right? You don't really think about aging when you're in your twenties or most of us don't, I feel like. And then when you start to creep up, like kind of where to where I am and, um, you now I'm starting to think about it, right? I'm starting to think more about my skincare and, and all these things. Um, because I want to age gracefully and I want to feel good the, you know, as I continue to get older. And I know I'm not you know, I'm 37, whatever, that's old or young, depending on how you look at it. But um, I just love when I hear people say they feel decades younger, because it's like, again, such a testament to how we don't have to feel like 40 is old, or 50 is old, or 60 is old, or 70 is old, you know, we kind of have this idea of what, when your body, well, I'm just 50 now. So I'm going to start breaking down or I'm 40 now or, you know, whatever, whatever age you pick, it's kind of just like assumed that things aren't going to feel the same way or you're not going to feel the same way or be able to do the same things. But so many of us now feeling like we're decades younger or feeling like we're aging backwards. I've heard um, people say that too. That's so encouraging, right? Because 
now at the age that I am, I can look out and say, okay, because I have a young, young child and I want to be a fun, active, energetic, participating mom for, you know, a long time. And so I could, I can look now over the next 20, 30 years of my life and go, I'm going to be able, God willing, you know, as long as barring any disaster, um, I'm going to be healthy and I'm going to be vibrant and I'm going to feel alive and I'm going to want to go play on the jungle gym with my kid still, you know? So I love that. <clears throat> what are you all seeing in here? Let's see. Dealey says, I'm new here. I didn't know about the polls. I'll have to watch them. Yes. So usually on Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, um, by Wednesday, I have a poll of the week out on my community tab. And um, then it's just, it's been kind of a more personal development, lifestyle related question, but we try to incorporate nutrition too. And then that just gives me an idea for a topic to talk about um, on these Sunday live streams. So we kind of just do it that way. And then um, if it goes in another direction, we go in that direction, but that's kind of how we do it for now. So, and then of course, if you don't vote in it, it's obviously still come in and hang out and share your thoughts. Um, United Carnivore says mindset, everything is just a thought. I was 360 pounds last year and now 180 pounds. Gratitude is the best attitude. Carpe diem. Yes, it really is. And I found, um, too, in my own journey that it was like when you're sick and you're just feeling like garbage all the time, it's hard to be grateful. Like I found it very difficult to, to feel genuine about being grateful for things when I was just feeling terrible all the time. And so I don't know which comes first, the chicken or the egg. You start practicing gratitude and then you, you know, you feel better or you feel better and you start being more grateful. But I think they feed off of each other in that way because um, the better you feel, the more you, the more you're open to all of the beautiful things that are around you and all of the wonderful things that do exist. And the more you focus on um, feeling better and opportunity and what's available, the more the, the more and more you notice those things. And so, yes, going from 360 to 180, um, I would, you know, I can imagine how, how much different that is and how much better you must feel. I'm half the man I used to be, LOL, yeah, for sure. Um, Lee says, if you drink your coffee warm, you probably need to drink warm liquid to clear your throat, just an idea. Yeah, I haven't been drinking coffee at all this month. I've been drinking hot water. I just run water through my coffee maker. Um, and that's it. So <clears throat> I've just been waking up with it. Um, this month more since I gave up the coffee. So I don't know. And I have ice. I have cold water here. That I should probably be drinking too. It goes away. We've also had, there's been a cold circulating around, um, Ben's work too. We haven't, like, I haven't gotten sick yet, but sometimes I think maybe it's just this time of year. I don't know, but thank you. Stay hydrated. Um, the honey bear. I was listening to an audiobook that suggested the body's not necessarily designed to break down or age. It's about the power of the mind and body to be coherent with spirit than the light energy. Yes. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, a lot of the more, I would say, I don't know, because I was going to say ancient texts or ancient, um, like traditional Chinese medicine, Qigong, yoga, a lot of that, a lot of that stuff. It came from a lot of things. Like some of it was martial arts component. And then, um, but, but the harnessing of the body's energy or the chi or the light energy, there's different names for it, um, is definitely something that is documented in a lot of health related and, um, spiritual texts too. And so there's definitely like, that's again, kind of why I try to incorporate some of this stuff because the, our mind is so powerful and what we believe is, does affect what goes on in our physiology and what, um, we are open to and what we experience and what we allow in. And so, um, yes, I think 
thinking about that and trying to develop a physical practice, whether it's Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga, martial arts, anything that you like doing, even walking or running, like all that kind of stuff that just keeps that energy moving in your body. It's not just good for, you know, weight loss, which most of us know that exercise is not the way to lose weight. Um, but yeah, keeping that body moving, keeping the energy moving, our lymphatic system ties into this, I feel like too, with detoxification, because the lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. It's just, it solely relies on us moving our body and, and being in different positions. And so we can easily stagnate energetically and like lymphatic wise when um, I'm trying to avoid the drug sun because it gets so hot right here. Um, that can happen if we stop moving, you know, and that's a lot of us experience that from doing seated work, like in um, being uh, seated all day or doing a lot of driving or stuff like that. You can you can feel that when you it, your body just tightens up. And so movement. Um, and then you're saying uh, we're not necessarily designed to break down our age. I think, I think we've we've gone probably a long way from what our potential is in the realm of aging. And um, you know, the the one interview I haven't watched yet, which I don't know why I haven't watched the full one, is with Maggie, the rancher from Canada. And how young she looks. I think she's, what, 80 years old or 70, 75 or something like that. And she looks 30 years younger or something like that. And she's essentially been a carnivore for most of her life. Um, so I don't think, Honey Bear, I don't think you're carnivore, right? Did you mention last time you eat mostly vegetables? Um, if I'm wrong, correct me. But um, so, yeah, I think there's definitely something to that. The mind and the body clearly work together and we can the more we learn about that the more that can assist us in our own healing process and finding the ways or the modalities that are going to help us kind of clear out whatever it is so kind of just an example of that i um i've always been a fan of yoga yoga is something i've always come back to um even when i've kind of like taken a pause on fitness and stuff like that. And I've noticed lately, I've talked about lately how I've kind of cut out exercise a lot just because it was such a stress on me that I wasn't, I wasn't able to tolerate it. While I was transitioning to this way of eating, I was feeling just really, really burnt out hormonally. Um, and so I was trying to just give my body the rest that it needed to recoup and get off the caffeine and all this kind of stuff. Um, and so, but I can feel in my body a difference. Like I just don't feel because I used to do yoga like almost every day and I did some pretty intense, you know, classes and it's a night and day difference how I feel just how I can move around and how I can um how I just feel energetically. And so I'm I'm trying to draw a bunch of lines between what you're saying here. So um forgive me. But I'm really excited to get back into that, but I didn't want to push myself because I don't want to burn out and kind of go back in the energy department. I'm finally starting to get my energy back and feel better every day. Um, and so I don't want to push it too fast, but I can feel the tightness and I can feel like my body just wants to stretch, you know, it just wants to like rah, loosen up. And so all that's connected. Yes. And all of it, um, matters when it comes to our healing and then like incorporating these different things at different times when they're appropriate with the intensity that it's it's appropriate thanks for sharing that we'll do the heavy lifting darren Earps in here good morning late to school today <laughs> 42 is that 42 is that how old you are is that the temperature wait what's the temperature here it's supposed to warm up today. Um, but good morning. <laughs> uh, Terry says, I had a colonoscopy on Thursday, have only eaten meat since and feeling great. Awesome. Yes. Um, I've never had the pleasure of having one of those. <laughs> um, I probably should have when I was really sick, but um, I'm glad you're feeling good. That's and that'll be a, an interesting 
comparison when you perhaps go back for another one, whenever that happens, then you can compare and see um, how you're doing kind of more technically, which is really cool. The honey bear says, I'll have to check out the Maggie video. Correct. I'm dominantly plant-based. Yes. I know it's on um, Dr. Chafee's channel for sure. That's where I saw it, but I think she's been interviewed on um, a couple other ones. I think she's been on Carrie's Homestead How channel as well. So one example, and um, there's a couple other ladies that I follow too that just report like their fine lines are going away. They notice their wrinkles are have been lessened and they just feel like they're aging backwards. And so, you know, that's always encouraging for all of us, right? Meeting Wellness is here. Hello all, good morning. Um, it's pretty early for you too, right? You're on the sun rises in the east and goes back in time towards the west. That's how I always have to remember it. So yeah, it's even earlier for y'all. So thanks everybody for being in here. So we had a couple, let's see, um, Chelsea, Chelsea Colley in the poll um, said that she, she says, I'm wanting to lose extra weight and I want to have another baby. I want to be a fun, active mom. My son is four and I definitely want to be around a long time. Love your channel, your honesty, and the fact that you combine healthy eating and personal development and mom content is great too. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chelsea. And I feel the exact same way. I want to have energy. I want to be in a good mood. I want to feel uplifted. I want to have fun with my kids. And my daughter is almost four not quite yet. And so, yeah, I'm kind of in that same boat. I want to just enjoy life and feel good and be a fun mom. So yes, let's see W or Ray McClama with a W my family journals a Oh, my family journals talked about my ancestors eating nothing but buffalo, and they described them as perfect examples of human beings, tall, athletic, excuse me, and could withstand extreme climates and long trips on foot or horseback. Yes. That's so cool that you have those family journals. I love ancestry. I've always been very curious about that. I've done my like ancestry DNA to try to see if I could find more relatives. And I didn't find a whole lot, but um, that is so neat that you have that. Because to me, and um, maybe just Dr. Chavis in my mind, just because we had that live stream on Friday. Yes, two days ago. And he actually talked about this too. We It was um, some carnivore, all different carnivore parents. And so we all got to ask him a question related to you know, childhood nutrition and eating this way. And um, we kind of got into that where um, I believe he was referencing the Native American population and how um, there's been such a shift in stature and, and nutrition or not nutrition, but just how, how people used to be um, in terms of health and now the change since adopting this modern diet. And so it's an example of a culture that, and I, and maybe perhaps you're Native American. I don't know if, um, if you watch the replay, if you want to share that or not, but, um, because he was mentioning, you know, they primarily Buffalo, right. And then obviously gathered some things too, but how much different it is now that we eat this processed modern diet with a lot more agricultural products involved. So, um, yeah. And being able to withstand the climate and, and along like walking long distance outside, hiking, that type of stuff. Um, that's just stuff we don't do today, right? We have tons of coats. It's kind of funny here where I live in Texas because I'm originally from like North Wisconsin. And so we grew up with harsh winters, very cold winters, long winters. And I've lived in many other places since then, but I always um, find it funny here when it's like 40 degrees, people are, you'll see some people walking around here, like in parkas with hats and scarves and stuff. And I, I think it's so funny sometimes, but um, then the opposite is true. I cannot tolerate the heat. Like people who are, have grown up down here, like the, the summer heat just, I mean, it's bad. I'm like, have to be near water all the time. I'm like, I got to get in the pool or take a shower or something because 
it's too hot for me. So that's always, and sometimes you think like, how did people even survive before air conditioning, you know, or before you had electric heating in your home in the winter? Like there was so much work that was involved just to stay warm or to try to stay cool and survive. And um, I would imagine we were just more, we could just tolerate more, you know, when your body's conditioned to that. Um, and so I don't know if that's 100% diet related um, or not, but I would assume it's diet and lifestyle combined. We just got, um, we've gotten very comfortable and, and blessed in all the things, the modern conveniences that we do have that we don't even have to think about surviving that type of stuff or withstanding it in many cases. Um, so that's, thank you for that comment. That's really cool. Um, carnivore hippos and bikinis said it was all of the above. So all those choices. Um, but particularly the third one, which was, um, inspired by someone else's transformation, but it was so many reading the stories in the comments. There were so many, but actually the thing that tipped me over into the next day going cold Turkey, Carrie Mann's 30 day transformation. Yes. That's so cool. And that's, um, that's a good example too, of kind of all these things compounding on each other and seeing, um, you know, you see someone's transformation, then you start to question the nutrition guidelines, then you start to see another person's transformation. And then you start to see, you know, maybe you change something in your diet, and you start to see something's different. And all of those things come together, especially being able to go online today and read the stories. Um, they're just yeah, they're just stacking up like crazy. So that's super powerful. Thanks for sharing that. Let's see what you guys are saying in here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, I saw, Christy, you were saying this in, I think, uh, Ellie's last live stream, too, that your son, where is this comment? Um, today's day one of Keto Carnivore for your son. I'm waiting for him to tell me he's hungry, and we'll start with scrambled eggs and bacon crumbled in. That's such a win. I'm so happy for you. That's that's really cool. Because we were kind of talking about that, too, in the live stream where with Dr. Chafee, where it's it's harder when your kids are older, right? And they've, um, and you've got to kind of really shift their, their eating, um, because it's so, it's so natural to them. It's what they're used to. And it's a little bit easier when you have younger kids to make changes because they're not, it's not so ingrained in them yet, or maybe ingrained is the wrong word, but it's just not, what they're used to as much. So that's, that's super cool. I, I think I heard you say you're going to do the, the kilts as ice cream too. My little one loves ice cream. So I need to get an ice cream maker for the summer too. Um, let's see. Pendar says, Oh, I got the heck out of Wisconsin at 25, then moved to New Mexico. Talk about culture shock. Well, yeah, I live, we lived in Arizona for, I don't know, about two years, 18 months or so. Um, so not New Mexico, but, uh, similar and the dryness, holy mackerel. At first I liked it, but then as time went on, I was like, this is too dry for me. I can't even, I don't know. It's, it's super, super dry. It's beautiful though. I'd never seen the desert. I'd never seen the high desert. Like it's, it's really neat, beautiful, but yeah, completely different than Wisconsin, right? It's totally, totally different. I still have a little bit of an accent and people, people could pick on up, pick on up, pick on, pick on up it. What am I trying to say? People picked up that I had a Northern accent over there. Um, let's see. United Carnivore says, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Have fun and go out and play. Yes. I've been adopting that mentality a lot. And I do miss yoga. I really do miss kind of having a formal something that I can rely on that I know what works. But I've just been going to the park and stretching and playing with my kid. They actually put, I feel like this was because of me, but we were at there's a lot of parks around here. So we kind of just make our rotations and we like to go find new ones and stuff like that. But there was this one that we've been going to pretty regularly and 
I kind of like got on some of the stuff and was twirling around and having fun one day. And then the next time we came, they had a sign up that said, if you're an adult, like get off this stuff basically. And I was like, is that because of me? Was I having too much fun? Um, but I don't know, maybe it was, but then the next time we came, something was broken. And so perhaps like people were just being crazy on it and then they broke the kid's stuff. But yes, we do cartwheels now. We go to the playground and I'm, I've also been getting into some aerial training. Like, um, I've always been interested in sort of the acrobatic circus type stuff. And everywhere I've lived, I've taken some sort of related class like that. And here in Dallas, they have um, a couple places that do aerial stuff. And so I've been, I went twice in January, but then the last two times they had a class, the weather was really bad. And so we didn't go or I didn't go, but that's what I really, that's what I really want to get into. It's so fun. It feels like pure play and it's difficult, which I like. And it, it forces you to stretch and really, you know, it incorporates a lot of the other things about yoga that I've always liked, but it's a fun and there's music and you get to choreograph and all this stuff. So like that is 100% me. Um, so I'm saving up to get one for my, for my stand in here that I can hang inside and then I'll probably do it a lot more instead of having to go to class. But yes, I totally agree. And having a, having a child is what really brought that out in me. I had like forgotten how to do that completely. And then just watching my child play and interacting with her, I'm like, I'm just a big kid. Really? A lot of times I can do this too. So yes, totally. Lisa's devastating impact of the people. Americans used to be good looking, not fat slums like right now. Just look at old Woodstock pictures and videos. Yeah, it's really, it's really, it's really sad, you know, and I, I feel for people because it's, it's what we've been essentially guided to do, you know, and ultimately we have control over our lives. We have control of what we buy and what we eat and what we consume and what we don't consume. But, um, you know, we've, I think a lot of this stuff comes together, like convenience and being super busy and um, just increasing technology and, and all the appliances we have and, and all this stuff can contribute in certain ways to our lack of just pre even just preparing food from scratch at home versus resorting to processed foods or eating out or takeout or all that kind of stuff. Like all of those habits have brought us and, and, and those changes in our culture and society have impacted our health. And it's, it's very sad to see. And I feel for people because, you know, more and more people are suffering and they don't, they don't know why a lot of us, you know, they don't understand that, that that's what's happening. And so the more of us can speak out, I feel like, and share our stories and have conversations like this, um, the more hopefully we can inspire others to try something different. Hey, carnivore hippos and bikinis. We just covered your comment um, from the poll. I like having conversations via the comments. The post feature is good. Great. I'm glad you like it. I think it's kind of fun too. It gives me good ideas of things to talk about. Um, <clears throat> Space Fox says, do you get this comment too? Well, it's great that it worked for you, but it won't work for everyone. What, what, do or what would you say to that? This one, I'm glad you brought this up because, you know, this is something I've thought about quite a bit and I've experimented a lot with, right? And so if it was, I have kind of two answers to it. And I think that on the one hand, we are all human beings, right? We are all a species of, of animal, a species of mammal. And just like, this is kind of Dr. Chafee's argument that, um, or at least I've heard him articulate this the most, that that is the reason why we have a specific diet, right? We have a range of things that are optimal for our development, growth, maturation, and an aging process, our entire lifespan, um, just like every other creature does. It doesn't mean that we can't eat things that aren't, you know, eat other things outside of that, but that's not 
optimal. That's not our optimal diet where we will experience the, the most of our own genetic potential. And so from that perspective, I think that there is a way of eating that works for quote unquote everyone, right? But it's still within a spectrum. And that's where I like Dr. Barry's, um, the way that he presents the information. It's like we have a proper human diet, right? That's the boundary around what is appropriate for our species of mammal to eat. And then within that, there is variation, right? There is individuality between that. And that could comprise of different genetics, different culture, different um, ancestry, where, you know, certain populations may be able to tolerate certain amounts of carbohydrates, carbohydrates or specific plant foods better, especially if they're prepared traditionally. And um, I think being prepared traditionally is is part of the conversation that doesn't get addressed very much when we talk about incorporating plant foods or even on like ketovore or ketogenic diets, right? Because a lot of the vegetables, like broccoli is a good example, didn't even exist. It doesn't exist in nature. It's been bred through, you know, agriculture and um, it's been bred as uh, I think it's the it comes from cauliflower, which comes from like all of the, all of those are related, you know, but it, it didn't exist in nature. You could never go out and find a wild broccoli, you know, 700 years ago or a thousand years ago and, and eat it. Right. So like it depends on what we're talking about when we're talking about um, it, it won't work. You know, like you're saying it won't work for everyone. Well, it depend. you'd have to think about all that, right? You'd have to think about, well, if you're saying this other way of eating works, um, why, why would it work if some of these foods that we're talking about didn't even exist in nature or didn't even exist in the form that we are consuming them currently? Because either they're not being prepared traditionally, they're not the same grain, perhaps, like the modern grains are not the same as the ancient grains. And so there's there's a lot of nuance when it comes to that question and saying that, um, you know, you, you'd have to be, that's what frustrates me about the question is like, most often they won't be more specific about it. They won't say, oh, but it won't work for everyone. Well, why not? And and what makes you think that, right? And, and so then you have to look at, um, it's really just comes down to, in my opinion, like, are you thinking from an ancestral perspective from the perspective of, hey, we are, our bodies are most adapted to consume what's optimal for us. And again, that doesn't mean that you can't survive or you can't live on something else, but that's not going to be optimal for you. So what is it that, and I'm not saying you Space Fox, but I'm saying like to anyone who asked that question, what is, what is your goal here? Like, what is, what is your, what are you looking for in this? Are you looking to be optimal or are you looking to just be able to include things that you just want to eat, even though they're not optimal? And that's fine if you want to do that. But I think what we're trying to get at with sharing our stories and saying like carnivore changed my life or this way of eating is appropriate for everyone in a sense is because we believe that it can be doesn't mean everyone has to choose that, but that it is such a, it's a foundation of what a proper human diet should be because it's been the most consistent part of our nutrition since we essentially, you know, came down from the trees, we harnessed fire, we, you know, started making tools, hunted, all that stuff. A great book, um, that talks about this and really brings up more of the traditional preparation and why that's so important for the bio bioavailability of plant foods that we've eaten culturally traditionally is um, Eat Like a Human by Dr. Bill Schindler. Again, he's been interviewed on Chafee's podcast and I think some others too. And he like he's done a ton of research and traveled all over the world cooking and preparing things with um, native populations and like tr where cultures where there's still a lot of traditional preparation done. And so I think all that comes into play for this question, right? So I do get that question. And I think that if we open up the, if we just take the boundary away and we say, well, any diet can work for anyone, do what works for you. That is not, in my opinion, 
um, a well-founded answer because there are no vegan, long-term vegan populations. Um, we know that, you know, there's, there's a difference like, uh, who was pointing out here, the difference in even his own family journals talked about his ancestors being tall, athletic, extending, withstanding extreme climates and being very robust human beings eating nothing but Buffalo. And now, you know, is that the same as today? I don't think so. And so something changed and it was more agriculture. It was more industrialized food products. It's now it's more crap and seed oils and additives and flavorings and chemicals being put into our food. And so, um, all of that, that doesn't work, you know, like that's clearly not working for us. And so I think, again, some of these questions like that, they need, you need a boundary around, okay, well, what is, what are we talking about? And what is food? You know, what is nutrition? They are things that nourish our body. They provide our body with the nutrition that it needs to repair and heal and build and continue to grow and, you know, filter out all the junk and all that stuff. And so we'd have to kind of put some boundaries around what we're actually talking about in order to answer that question of, you know, will this, it won't work for everyone. I personally believe that it can. And we're part of that experiment. That's kind of why the title of this um, talk today in the thumbnail was we are the experiment because we are, in my opinion, a part of a movement that is relearning, as Dr. Barry would say, you know, how, what a proper human diet is and how it is the best way primarily optimally for human beings to eat and each one of our stories like we're talking about today is evidence of some facet of that it's evidence of how things can change almost essentially overnight like um forgive me for not remembering your name who brought up in the beginning about four years of of living in bed level depression gone in five days when switching to a carnivore diet Somebody want to argue with that? Like that's, that's that person's experience. And so when you have a bunch of these starting to stack up from all different areas of the health spectrum, all different ailments, not just one thing or two things or just people losing weight. It's like literal night and day transformations. People are now experiencing different lives. I mean, I'm not going to argue with it. So anyway, sorry, that was a little long winded, but I think that that comment is hard and I sometimes don't even want to address it when it comes up written in like a, the comment section because I'd have to write all of that down and I don't have time for that usually. So thanks for bringing that up. United Carnivore, our life is a direct manifestation of our thoughts, fears, and desires. Yes, I 100% agree. And I am um, gobbling up a couple of books. One's an audiobook, one's a Kindle book. And I just joined a course where I am learning how to, um, I'm diving even further into that than I have before and learning some techniques that I'm going to try on myself first and then probably share with you guys too about change because I, I really got, I got touched by some of the things that you guys said last week um, about your self image and how you see yourself differently and, and some of the struggles. And I'm like, I wish, I wish I would have helped more. I wish I would have had better, um, just like here, right here in the now strategies to offer. And so I'm, I'm really, uh, spending some time digging more into that, this whole thing. Cause I'm super fascinated by it. And I believe that it's true as well. Derek Dean. Hello. I've been around 80% animal based in my diet, but trying to move over to 90% heavy on the meat. It's amazing how easily fake processed foods can throw off progress. Absolutely. I told you guys in uh, one of my last update videos that I had um, like cookies over Christmas and stuff. And it took me, it took me a good two weeks to feel like I was back, like stable blood sugar, mood things, all that stuff. So absolutely. We, these hours go by so fast and I do have to go because Ben has to go to work. Um, so I apologize for not getting through all, all the comments here, but, um, on the post, but thank you for everybody who contributed to the post. Your stories, um, are so, I just want to validate everyone. Your stories inspire me and, and inspire me to keep going as well. Um, 
I will see a few more here of what you're saying, and then we'll run through the journal prompts real quick. And then I do have to go, but I appreciate everybody being in here today. Um, keto simple. Most people think they're doing the right thing to eat low fat, low meat, vegetable oils, focusing on food with a heart healthy label. So indeed is sharing our stories, being a positive example. Yes. And we are going to change the world. You know, we really are. We are the experiment right now. It's sort of this, this, um, big pile of anecdotes, but I mean, you can't argue with some of these people's results. Derek says, have you seen Matthew Lysak's new book? No, Fiat Food. He discusses a lot of the bizarre history behind the health standards at least. Yes, I will take that down. Thank you. I have not seen it. Keto Simple, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cabbage are all the same plant. Yes, cultivated in different cultures over time. Right. So I mean, there. again, you could argue whether that's natural or not. There's probably an argument that it is, but Essentially, these are not things that we we ate over very, very, very long periods of time like we have meat. Um, and they're they're relatively new, ancestrally speaking. And so not all of us are adapted to eating that or even in the traditionally prepared ways like me, for example. Even looking at Brussels sprouts, I get gut pain. Um, selective breeding in our animals and plants throughout history, not really nefarious, more to ensure survival. Right. And I agree. I mean, we we definitely do what we need to survive and we adapt, you know, as best we can. John P says, I saw Ken Berry talk to Bill Schindler. Schindler. It was fascinating. Yes. He's, he's an incredible resource. I think, um, I bought his book and I'm really bad at reading books, but there's a lot of recipes in there. And so that's actually something I'm looking into more also, um, making foods with my little one to try to incorporate like, um, like we eat kimchi in the house, um, Ben eats kimchi and stuff like that. So some of those types of things. Um, Space Fox says, right, we've been eating meat for millions of years, but eating ag products only for 10,000. And scientists that compare say our health degraded, our brains, jaws, and stature. Yes. Okay. I'm so sorry. I didn't get to everybody's um, comments here, but I'm going to you know what? Um, I'm going to post these journal prompts here in the first comment. We'll read them really fast. Uh, number one, how's your intuition guided you on the path towards better health? Some things to reflect on this week. Because we're, we're a lot more in touch with that intuition now. At least I feel like that now that I've cleaned up my health. Number two, how has your health transformation informed other areas of your belief system? So questioning a lot of these things and looking at people who've had different results and different experiences, how has that kind of trickled into other areas of your life? Do you now think critically or in more intuitively about other things? I feel like I do. Um, number three, how does leading by example, for example, being a healthier, happier you, affect change in those around you? This is something I think a lot of us care about. We want to help other people change and feel better, but sometimes not everybody's open to hearing it or trying it. So just leading by example, how can that be, um, how can that affect change in other people? And lastly, number four, what are the next steps that you need to take for your own personal health journey? I wrote a couple things down and hooray. Thanks everybody for being here. Sorry, I got to run, but um, I will see you again next week. A poll will be up Tuesday or Wednesday. And hopefully I'll actually get some more videos done from my backlog this week. So thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a great week.